Hello folks. In today's video, we are going to see how to install and configure Elasticsearch on an EC2 machine running on AWS. I already have started an EC2 instance running Amazon Linux and that is the operating system we are going to choose. Here, this is my instance and I have started it as a T2 large instance. If you are not having the flexibility to start a bigger instance, go ahead and start with the medium that should still be enough to follow this tutorial. I have already logged into that instance and to help us follow this article of all the steps that are necessary, I have written a GitHub instructions. Let us go ahead and see that. So here I'll put this link into the description field so anybody following this video can go ahead and follow this article and install all the commands that is mentioned here. So the first step is to make sure that we have the minimum Java version. So as you can see here, the prerequisite states, states that Elasticsearch needs a Java version 8. So let us go ahead and do that first. Here I am in the server. Let me just go to root and let us go ahead and check the version. And if the command is not right, let us try it again. So you can see here it is at version 1.7. I don't want 1.7, I want 1.8. Let's go ahead and install that. So after installation of 1.8, I would like to remove the 1.7 so that it doesn't interfere with my Elasticsearch installation as well. So let us remove the 1.7. So that is removed. Next step is to go ahead and install the Elasticsearch. So the first step in installing is accepting the GPG keys so that we know that we are uh, installing the approved packages and not some other spurious packages. So let us go ahead and accept the keys. So now the key has been imported. So we should be able to create a repository and install the Elasticsearch packages. So to create the repository and installing, these are the commands. I'm just going to copy and paste them. So we should be able to install them. So we have created the repository. We are going to install it now. And installation is going to take a minute or two. Now we have completed our installation. So all you have to do is make sure that our Elasticsearch boots every time on the startup sequence and also start the service. So I have written the commands for them as well. So if you are familiar with the chconfig, you can go ahead and do that. Or if you're not, you can follow the article. So this is the command for making sure that Elasticsearch boots every time when our server is rebooted. These are the commands to ensure that Elasticsearch is treated as a service and you can start and stop whenever necessary. So let us go ahead and do that. So let us make it in boot as start time. Let us go ahead and start the service now and it is going to go ahead and check the background configurations and it is going to make the service come online. So if everything is done properly, we should be able to do something like a curl, local host, and Elasticsearch runs on the port 9200, and you should be able to see a output something like this. So if you're seeing this, then your Elasticsearch is working fine. But if you want to try this over a browser, then you need to make sure the Elasticsearch is reachable on a public IP address. And for that, we need to do some additional configurations. Let's go ahead and do that. So here you can see here the steps for uh, making sure the Elastic server, uh, Elasticsearch server is available through a public IP address. All we have to do is this is a dirty hack of getting it working on your public IP address, but do not try this on your production configuration. You would probably want to put in your IP address behind a NAT server or in your private IP address. But since this is a tutorial, I'm just going to go ahead and configure it. So let us go ahead and make it. And now if I go ahead and put the server's uh, public IP address in my browser, I should be able to get the same message. So let's do that. So let me copy this public IP address. And I'm just going to go ahead and open a new browser and put in the address bar this one, IP address now. And if you try to hit the browser uh, IP address at port 80, it will not work. Make sure that you are using port 9200 and you should be able to get the message of uh, this is a search server. 
and remember we made some configuration changes so let us go ahead and restart our Elasticsearch server so the command is to say service Elasticsearch restart and once it is restarted we should be able to access this server through its public IP address so let us go ahead and hit refresh now again and there you go that is how you access your Elasticsearch so in case if you want to access your Elasticsearch through a GUI or you wanted a web front end that's an easy way to do that if we go back to our article there is a nice way uh, there is a open source plugin that uh, you can install in your Chrome browser which helps you to go ahead and access your Elasticsearch through your browser itself so all you have to do is go ahead and click on, on this Elasticsearch head and install this plugin into your browser so once you add that you should be able to access your Elasticsearch through this IP address itself so the plugin is installed all you have to do is click on this and then let me go ahead and copy this IP address here and then put it here so you see here I'm connected and it says the cluster health is good and as of now there is no data there are no indices so that's why it is saying the uh, there is nothing there it's just the default index so this is how you install Elasticsearch in your uh, EC2 machine and then you start adding indexes or search through them in the next video I'll show you how to install and configure Logstash and push the information from Logstash to your Elasticsearch clusters thanks for watching happy learning